Hello and welcome to this episode of the Hazard Gaming Videocast. Today I've got another unboxing, well I mean what the cool kids these days would call an unboxing but what we call uh, buying something second hand that's in a box and then taking a look at it. And here it is. It is the Star Trek role-playing game. It is the second edition, produced by Fasa, Fasa, somewhere in about 1985, I think, maybe 1983 initially. Fasa uh, is a few guys who uh, started a company. Um, Fasa actually was originally uh, initialism or something like that. I learned the other day that an acronym, something like NASA, is an acronym because it, it makes a word, whereas an initialism is uh, something that's just the initials of a thing. But I, I suppose FASA says something, doesn't it? Just like NASA, FASA. Anyway, initialism, you can add that to your, uh, word, as your word for the day. Anyway, so FASA, uh, originally it, stood, it was a joke, uh, it stood for Freedonian Association or something like that, something S, A, something, I don't know. Um, and it was a group of guys that got started by making some uh, products for Traveller. Uh, and then after they made some stuff for travel, they developed some of their own intellectual properties. Uh, there were a couple of guys that got some money off their dad. Uh, one of their dads, the dad came and ran the financial side of the company or something. And then in 2001, they said, nope, we're not doing it anymore. Uh, and then they shut down um, FASA, which by that point had just become the name FASA and it didn't actually stand for anything. Um, and they have games like uh, EverQuest. Uh, and they've got, obviously they've got Star Trek, and they had a couple of other intellectual properties. I don't remember the names of all of them, but um, yes, yeah, so it was one of the the early uh, game companies. And just relatively recently, a lot of those intellectual properties have returned to them. And some guys associated with the company, just in the last few years, have uh, started to produce some games again. Uh, there's been a couple on Kickstarter recently. I don't remember exactly the names of them again. You can you can check those out. But anyway, we're here to talk about uh, Star Trek. The role-playing game. So, as I say, this is the second edition um, role-playing game. Um, I wasn't really a Star Trek fan at all. Um, I, it, I guess Star Trek. I mean, let's take the can off the worm lid of. Uh, off. Let's try that again, shall we? Let's take the lid off the can of worms and talk about like science fantasy as opposed to science fiction. I, I was always told the difference between science fantasy and science fiction is that science uh, fiction is really about uh, sort of uh, speculative futures involving uh, technology which was was important whereas science fantasy uh, like star, star wars there's not really a lot of discussion of any of the science in it um in fact the most description of any of the science is really the the lightsabers and the midi chlorine and the stuff if you i don't know if you've stricken that from your memories but anyway um so anyway science fiction as opposed to science fantasy i was very much interested in the science fiction rather than the science fantasy uh, having said that, my very first game that I ever played was uh, was Traveller, um, which obviously was some very hard uh, science fiction type role playing game. Um, and anyway, let's get to it. So unboxing Star Trek Second Edition. Um, again, I went on Kijiji and I, I found this. I've seen this a couple of other times, so I knew it wasn't especially rare, but it was. Uh, this is just fifteen bucks, um, which I think is a reasonable price. If you take a look at the box here, you can sort of. See, there's a bit of uh, sellotape work being done on the, or scotch tape work has been done on the corners. I'm going to guess at least a couple of these uh, corners uh, are broken. Um, I'm going to show you the FASA logo, th logo there. Hopefully it, it shows up. There we go. It's FASA, little crossed swords. Reminiscent to me, at least, of the Buffalo Sabres ice hockey team uh, logo. Anyway, so Star Trek role-playing game. Uh, at this, about the same time, there was a deluxe edition as well, which had some little counters and a, like a, a galaxy map or something in it. But uh, let's have a listen. Sounds like there might be some dice in there. Um, anyway, it's really hard when you go there to, to get these sort of things. I buy them mostly for doing the videos, so I don't really dig in too carefully. Um, I must confess that I saw a uh, picture of the uh, of the game uh, before I bought it, uh, and all the the things that I expected to be in there were were in there, but there was no sign of any dice. So if there are dice in here, maybe I'm lucky, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but let's take a look. So. Um, Anyway, so let's look. Okay, so we've got, there's the lid, basic game, like I said. Uh, there's a bit of uh, tape on the inside as well. So, yeah, so obviously been repaired. It's got some little 
It's got blue marks and stuff in the corners, or maybe from the book, I don't know. Oh, and uh, there's the mystery of the dice sorted out. We've got a couple of uh, six-sided dice. Somebody obviously thought there were dice in it, and they put some dice in, whatever. But uh, the original game uh, came with two D10. It's a D percentile system, so those obviously are not the original dice. They're just some dice. Thank you for those. Uh, so we've got the Cadets Orientation uh, source book, uh, which has uh, the... Looks like it's got gear in it. We've got a, a tricorder. We've got uh, Spock using a tricorder there. I don't know exactly what he's up to. It looks like a, a photograph for... A, it looks like a like one of those old uh, photographs they have for uh, for models selling watches and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, it's got equipment. Uh, it's got lots of um, star-faring races. We've got Andorians, Katians, Katians. I don't know. Like I say, I don't really know anything about Star Trek. Edouan's Gorn, which looked like big angry Bosk type creatures. Maybe that's where they got the idea for Bosk, one of the bounty hunters from Star Wars. I don't know. Uh, Klingons, apparently. You can be a Klingon. I don't know about that for sure. Uh, Tellarites. Tellarite appear to be like um, lumberjack pigs. I'm not sure exactly if I have that right, but as I say, I'm not a Star Trek guy. I'm a bit stuffed up at the moment. Um, not very, uh, my voice might not sound as sonorous as it usually does. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, so this is for this book here, the uh, Cadets Orientation Source Book. Uh, it sort of has the information you might expect from uh, that sort of thing. So it's for making your, your guys up, or girls, or whomever. In space, the sexism doesn't exist. Uh, we've got a um, Starfleet Insignia uh, chart, which I guess you can maybe that says to the levels, I don't know. And uh, in here we've got some characters. Uh, we've got the uh, Enterprise personnel file. So you can see that uh, all of the usual suspects are, uh, are included. Um, so we've got uh, uh, Kirk and Spock and Bones. There's uh, Scotty. Uh, we've got Sulu. Um, uh, we've got Uhura, uh, Chekhov and... Christine Chappelle, I don't know who that is. Um, as I said, I don't know a lot about Star Trek. If you're currently furious because I don't know anything about that, well, what you get. Um, so one of the interesting things to note about this game was uh, that it did really well um, on the back of the fact that back in those days, there wasn't a lot of stuff going on with Star Trek. So having this additional information for Star Trek fans meant that it sold quite well. I don't know how many people um, that were into Star Trek uh, read the books and then played the game. Um, my understanding was that quite a few people bought it just for the information because they just couldn't get enough of information about Star Trek. As I said, there wasn't a lot available at that time. Um, anyway, then we've got the uh, Starfleet Officer's Manual. Uh, and I'm going to guess the uh, Starfleet Officer's Manual. Okay, this appears to have uh, more character stuff, so I'm not exactly sure what the difference is between the two types of... Um, this book and the Cadets Orientation Source book. But uh, yeah, this appears to be the one you use to make a character. So this one here uh, has information about gear and gadgets, I think, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, this is an unboxing. It's not a review. Those will come later. Um, and then we've got Starfleet Officer's Manual, um, which has uh, information about making characters, it looks like, anyway. I'm not 100% sure. Creating a character. There you go. So that put that one to bed. So this one is the one you use for creating a character. And it has got some of the smallest writing I've ever seen in any book that's not fine print. Now this is not like disclaimers and stuff. This is actually stuff you're supposed to read. Now, uh, I don't know. Were they saving money? I don't know. Bottom line is this stuff is small. So there we go. I'm going to have a shot. I've got no idea if this is going to come out, but look how small it is. Like, I went to the doctor, the eye doctor the other day, the optometrist, and um, I got my eyes checked. And even though I'm older, uh, my eyes came out perfect. In fact, above perfect. Like 15, 20 or 13, 20 or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, it was better than 20, 20. What that actually means, I don't know. I, I sometimes feel like they're just going to try and tell you something to make you feel good about your eyes. But bottom line is I didn't need any glasses. So let's just assume that at the worst I've got okay eyes. And looking at this, this writing is incredibly small. To, to read it comfortably, uh, you can see I'm already squinting at it. 
And I don't need glasses for reading either, by the way, that was checked as well. So, I mean, it's very small. Anyway, so there we go. I don't know at what point you can read it in the camera, but you can see that this is some of the smallest writing ever in a role-playing book. Anyway, so yeah, that's, um, that's that. Uh, one thing that the system does have that I do happen to know about uh, is that it has um, movement points. So what that means is when you come to a round, uh, you get some movement points uh, and you can split those up with doing things. So whereas usually in Dungeons and Dragons, you know, you get an action, right? Like you're going to attack somebody or maybe some other system where you're going to attack and defend or something like that. But in this, you get uh, action points and those action points you can distribute amongst the rounds. So for example, turning in place, so they have facing and stuff, they've got little characters, little uh, tokens and stuff maybe. Um, turn in place, one movement point. Stand or sit or stand. What? Stand or sit. Oh, stand to sit, sit to stand. Apparently those are the same, one point. Stand to kneel, kneel to stand, one movement point. Kneel to prone or kneel to prone, one stand. So you want to go from standing up to lying down. I guess it's going to be um, two because you've got to kneel and then you've got to lie flat. So that would be two. Movement, a move one square sideways one, move one square diagonally 1.5 because, you know, Pythagoras and all that. It's actually a slight uh, a slight overcharge because the uh, the long side on a triangle, as everybody knows, is the square root of 2, which is 1.41, whatever. Um, uh, evade, step sideways, 2 points. Uh, evade, square diagonally, 3 points. Uh, and then there's a whole big long list of them, but let's get to the ones that people care about. Fire, ready weapon, 1. Quick draw and fire. Three. Aim weapon. Two. So, I like it. I'm going to do a little bit of more research into that and see how that actually plays out. But again, that's for another day. And I don't know what day that'll be. Could be a long time in the future. Anyway. So, yeah. So, the movement goes on movement points. So, that's the uh, Starfleet Officers Manual. So, I guess you make a character. Maybe also, you the rules are in here. I don't know. It's about the size of a red box book. Uh, 40 pages. So, 10 Five sheets folded in half. Uh, and lastly, we've got the game operations manual. So, yeah, if you are buying one of these, you should have three blue books like this. If you're lucky, you'll have two dice that are ten-sided, not two six-sided. Uh, and you might also have a little bit of promotional material. Sometimes they came with a thing saying, buy this other stuff. Um, and I can already tell you that this has got some more incredibly small writing. Alien Attribute Generation Table. Uh, you can see they're very, 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 very small. I don't know if you saw that or if it focused, but I think I made my point earlier on. Um, one thing that I really like about this book uh, is that it's got a lot of uh, information about making planets. So regardless of the game that you were going to play, this would be awesome for making planets. So the Strange New World section. So you're going to make a roll uh, and you're going to say number of class M planets in the, in the system. I don't know what M exactly means. I'm sure somebody who's into Star Trek could tell you what that is, but um, yeah, so you figure out how many worlds there are in this system, so I don't know what class M means as I say, but anyway, um, so you can roll that, and then once you figure out how many worlds there are, then you're going to take a look at how many satellites there are, so um, natural satellites, so there might be, you know, like we've got one satellite, Mars has got two, um, and Saturn has got too many, uh, so then you can f r roll for planetary gravity, so you roll 5, uh, five plus 1d10 divided by 10 to figure out the gravity is. So you could be have, according to this, you could have gravity as high as um, 1.5 uh, Earth gravity um, or as low as, I don't know, roughly the moon's gravity, I guess, 0.6. Um, then you can, take, you can roll for the size, you can for the land area, so how much is land, how much is water. Uh, planetary rotation, the length of a day, uh, mineral content, general climate, roll for alien life, if you roll low you get plants, then it basically goes in terms of complexity, plants, lower animals, insects, fish, amphibians, birds, avians, mammal, and then special. There's no discussion of uh, bacteria, I guess we just assume that those are there. Um, you might find some of those other races. And then uh, later on the book, there are uh, that last table that I showed you was to write the alien attribute generation table. So you can 
roll up yourself an alien and, and then one of those guys can get into a punch up with Kirk or Spock or whoever. Not Bones because he doesn't carry guns or does he? I can't remember. Anyway, if you look at the cover here, you can see uh, he's got some sort of medical thing. And just, it's very interesting I found in, in Star Trek. You just need to wave this thing at the at the guy and then read the the machine. I mean, did he, um, do you, is it a special secret code on the machine? Like a union sort of thing? Nobody gets to learn how to use the machine. And so Kirk or Spock, could, maybe they did it. I don't know. I only saw a couple of episodes. One was about tribbles. Um, and that, so that's that. So that is your uh, second edition, FASA, Fredonian Association, something or other, something or other, um, role-playing game. FASA Star Trek, second edition. Nice. That's it for this episode of the Hazard Gaming video cast. And until next time, keep talking the walk. Mm -hmm.